All right, this is going to be an adventure. This is my last day in Vegas. I've been here for three freaking weeks and I'm tired of being in Vegas. So I've gotta be in Austin, Texas in three days. And so we're gonna drive it, take in plenty of time, go about six hours a day, stopping all along the way to see what bourbon we can find. So we're gonna do bourbon hunting in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. And I don't know anything about bourbon hunting in those states. I maybe bought a few bottles in Texas, but I haven't bought anything in those other two states. So it's gonna be an adventure. Now, I'm a guy who likes efficiency. Like I like to just get up early, hit the freaking road and get on out of Dodge. Normally a drive like this, it's probably a little too long to do in one day. I'll do 13, 14 hours in a day, but not whatever this is, 18 plus hours, something like that, I don't even know. With the wife and kids, probably too long. So we're gonna break it up over three days and that gives me plenty of time to hit all of these little side of the road liquor stores and see what we find. Now, I don't know where we're gonna put it if we find any more bourbon, but I've got my fancy cargo system here. We learned this the hard way. Last time we took a road trip, it rained and all our luggage got wet. And I was looking at like a bed cover for the truck or camper shell and if I would have bought those, I would have had no budget left for bourbon on this trip. This bag right here is completely weatherproof, sealed up tight, holds all of our luggage, all the stuff that can't get wet. It's like 99 bucks on Amazon. Like, give me a freaking break. You excited for this bourbon hunting adventure here, Jill? I'm so excited. You don't seem that excited. I'm really excited. Like on a scale of one to 10. 10. All right, kids, so what are y'all? Y'all excited about this? Y'all are hiding from the camera. We excited about this bourbon hunting trip? I'm not sure if anybody's excited about this trip. We're gonna find out though. So we're gonna try to make it to Gallup, New Mexico, which is not far into New Mexico. So we're gonna make it all the way across the state of Arizona. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. Basically every town we come to, we're just gonna check Google Maps, see if there's some liquor stores next to the interstate, and we're gonna stop at those. We're getting a bit of a late start because the kids wanted to go to a bookstore. So we came up here to Fremont Street and spent an hour. They could just spend all day in a freaking bookstore. Set them loose in a bookstore and they, they prefer that to a Chuck E. Cheese any day. Prefer that to Disneyland, I think, actually. You think probably just bookstore over Disneyland all day, every day. We are packed in here like sardines. I've got kids hiding in the back because they don't want to be on camera. We're not even going to check here in Nevada. As soon as I get into Arizona, we're going to find some places. We found a couple of liquor stores about three miles off the interstate here in Kingsman, and this is King's Liquors. Aptly named. They got a drive through which is cool, but let's go uh, check it out see if we can find anything. I don't know if I can play any of that conversation with the copyrighted music and all that I recorded on my handy dandy spy glasses here, but they're getting like $300 for a Henry McKenna 10. Like that's when you know you're in trouble. Like serious, $3,000 for an Eagle Rare 17, a thousand for Thomas Andy Sazerac. I just wasn't even gonna ask any more prices. This place, obviously not the kind of place that we're gonna buy whiskey from. Luckily, the only two liquor stores in this town are right next door to one another. So now we're at Buyers. Hey, uh, if you see Pappy sitting in a store, you probably don't wanna ask the price, I'm gonna be honest. What have you got on the BTAC there? The BTAC, all of those, like the, the Eagle Rare 17, the William LaRue, the Pappies, and then that Jack Daniels Koi Hill. I can't see the prices from here. It's kind of washed out. The Koi Hill, the one all the way to the right. Yeah, what's your price on that? It comes out to 950 or something. 950? Mm, yeah, I don't like it that much. This is 499 and this is 2799 The Eagle Rare 17, the one to the right of it? 13. Okay, and then the, the George T. Stag, that'll be the last one, I think. $199. Yeah, I figured that's what it's gonna be. Appreciate it, thank you. They wanted like $900 for the Jack Daniels Koi Hill, but the BTAC stuff was more reasonable, not reasonable, but more reasonable. The William Maru was $1,200. <sighs> I'll be honest, that's tempting. As hard as that bottle is, that's way below secondary. Like you could buy that and flip it for two pretty easy, but 1200 is just a lot of money for a freaking bottle. That's, uh, mm, that's tough. It's tough, but that's what we found so far in Kingman. Not looking good so far for Arizona. All these bourbon hunting videos we've been doing has been getting a little bit expensive. So we did take on a sponsor here to help just a little bit with our bourbon budget. I'm pretty much immune to bourbon. I come from a long line of Olympic quality drinkers and it takes a lot for me to have any ill effects the next day, especially when you're talking about my good old fashioned bourbon here. But you know what I'm not immune to? Tequila. Just about every story that ends with me almost dying or going to jail starts with rum or tequila. And so when I'm gonna have a good margarita or two or three, then I'm gonna have to have a little help feeling my best the next day. And that's where something like Z-Biotics comes in. I'm not a scientist. 
I just dress up like one on the internet every once in a while. But Zbiotics is gonna supposedly promote an enzyme that helps your body deal with all of the consequences of something like this Cuervo right here. So you wake up the next day feeling fresh as a daisy. And that sounds like a good idea to me. So I'm probably gonna relax tonight and have a few margaritas, but a little forethought and some Zbiotics before we get started. And I'm gonna be ready to go for those 8 a.m. work calls tomorrow morning. And if you wanna get some of this for yourself, go to zbiotics.com forward slash Bruzel. Use code Bruzel at checkout to save 15%. And it comes with a money back guarantee if you're not satisfied for any reason. So Kingman was a bust. No such luck there. I didn't check prices on every bottle they had. Like once you see that they want $900 for a bottle of Koi Hill, you just kind of know you're up against it. The William LaRue at 1200 is the only one they really had that was underpriced and it, it is tempting. We're gonna continue on. I think Flagstaff is our next stop. We're gonna get off at Flagstaff as long as it's not too bad. I came through here a couple of weeks ago and it was a freaking blizzard. So hopefully it's a little safer to drive around and if so, we're gonna stop in Flagstaff, see if we can't find some more destinations to check out. Okay, first of all, it is freaking cold in Flagstaff, Arizona. It's always cold in Flagstaff, Arizona. But we're trying to find a few liquor stores. I'm exhausted. So if my energy's low and the video sucks, it's Jill's fault. I don't know how it's Jill's fault. I'm the problem, it's But me. somehow, <laughs> <laughs> There's a Taylor Swift quote for everything at this point, isn't there? We were headed to a liquor store and we found this Grand Canyon Spirits. They rent ski and, and board rentals and they've got liquor. Not expecting a lot out of them, but let's go give it a try. See if we can get liquored up and then uh, break our knees while skiing. Everywhere I go has Buffalo Trace. Everybody's always telling me they can't find Buffalo Trace, and it is literally everywhere I go. Got a Midwinter Night's Dram. What's your price on that one? $320. And then the uh, Michter's 10 Year Rye. $329. <sighs> Prices are right there where it's like tempting. Not like super high secondary, yeah. but not great. Knob Creek 18. What's your price on that one? I haven't seen that one in the wild yet. $280. Any other allocated bourbons you've got hiding back here that I don't see? It's basically it right now. If you don't mind me asking, what's the price on the Henry McKenna 10 year? I don't know on the top. $79. Old overhaul bonded. Look at there. Got the smoke wagon Halloween glue in the dark bottles there. Wood for Baccarat. Man could spend some money here. I'm gonna put this one back. I haven't had it. I was thinking about buying it. I'm debating that mixture's right. It's a little pricey. What did you say that mixture's 10 year? That's 329. 329? Yeah. Okay. No negotiation room on those whatsoever. My manager was in. I'm gonna be in New yeah. Mexico by morning. Yeah. So, and then the uh, Knob Creek 18 was 280, 280 uh, and 329. Yes, please. Well, Appreciate it. Yes, sir. You too. All right. So, a little over $300. It's too much. I know it. I got caught up. Got excited. You had so many nice bottles. I got caught up in the excitement. It's my fault. Literally right next door, almost to that liquor store we just stopped at, is this cool little liquor store bear cave liquor store here got a cool little vibe to it small but hey, we had good luck at the last one let's give this one a try what is your price on that thomas handy sazerac the buffalo trace kosher wheat and this weller special reserve here uh, the is 99 uh, kosher is 99 and the is 12.99 right, you said 99 on the buffalo trace kosher yes sir i will take that one Anything else you're looking for? I mean, I'm always looking for something interesting or rare. You got anything hiding anywhere? That's what we got right Let's now. Let's, uh, sort of it. I don't even know what these kosher wheats go for. Like, I've never seen one in the store for sale, so I'm not even sure MSRP. I think it's probably 50, 60 bucks or so, if I had to guess. So, $100 on that one? I'll take that for as rare as that is. So, good score. Like, we've done really well. I'm going to have to at least find one more store here. All right, so slight change of plans. I got a little excited because I'd bought a couple of bottles of whiskey, you know, as you do. And and wanted to go find more, but there are really no other liquor stores that I could find on this side of uh, Flagstaff. And so we're gonna have to go pretty far out of the way. We've still got three hours to get through 
Arizona to New Mexico. So I think this is probably it for Arizona. Everything's so freaking far apart. It just took forever to get from anywhere to anywhere. But Flagstaff has got a few gems. Some things are overpriced a little bit, but not as bad as Kingman. So we're going to go to Gallup. We're going to crash. Then we're going to get up in the morning and we're going to check out New Mexico and try to do the same. Hopefully we'll get a little earlier start and have a little more time to, to hit more stores tomorrow while we're in New Mexico. So we'll see y'all in the morning. See, this is the problem with this kind of travel is every time you want to stop and get a hotel room, you then have to unpack everything from the truck that might possibly get stolen. And then you have to take it all back down the next morning and pack it up. And it's just super inefficient. It takes forever to get into a room and then get everything back out and, and into the truck and ready to go. So here we go. And now everything goes back in the bag. Finally all packed up and it is 10.05, which means we're actually pretty close to on time. The liquor stores don't open till 10. So there was no sense in us getting out of here any earlier than that. We have found two liquor stores fairly close to the hotel and the interstate. So we're gonna hit those and then that'll start our trek across New Mexico. We're gonna head down to Roswell and then over to Texas. Don't know what we're gonna find, but it can't be much worse than, uh, than Arizona. All right, so we're here at the Rocket Liquors, which is a lounge and a liquor store, which I've never been in a place that is a lounge slash liquor store. So that's gonna be interesting. Don't really have those back home, but what, what did you say when we pulled up, Jill? I said I don't have high hopes for this one. Which is funny, because oftentimes it's places like this you don't have high hopes for that you actually find things, because it's not what people are looking for here, and it, it sits on the shelf for a little while, so you can actually go grab it. So let's give it a try and see what's up. Now, do y'all normally just put them on the shelf when you get allocated stuff, or do you? Uh, usually, if we do, we come in, you ask, we have the special bottles in the All right, man, I appreciate it. Oftentimes the problem with these little places, you know, you got to talk to the owner or the manager or somebody like that. And they're almost never in when I come by. But if you were here locally, like if you could come regularly, figure out their schedule, you can oftentimes get some stuff like this. We stopped at one last night. It was just kind of a gas station liquor store. I didn't even have my phone or camera. I didn't even realize it was a liquor store when we stopped and went in. It's kind of the same thing. It's like, oh, the good stuff's in the back, but my manager won't be here until tomorrow. And I don't, I don't even know what it is or, or anything about it. Kind of same thing here. And honestly, he said they don't really have anything right now anyway but you would you would have to talk to the owner slash manager of the shop so on to the next one so i've never had good luck with grocery store liquor never been able to find anything at a grocery store and this turns out is a shop and save grocery store liquor store when i'm in these places if there are no customers inside i'll use the good camera so you'll notice last night i used the good camera for a couple of these had a little more fun with them but when there's a bunch of customers around you don't want to be obtrusive to the businesses so i'll I'll film here and we won't, you know, we won't show any faces or anything, but I'd at least show you what bottles or, you know, what conversations were had. Do y'all ever get any allocated bourbons? Any of the like harder to find bourbons in or only the Buffalo, only the Buffalo Trace? Blanton's. What was that? Blanton's, you had Blanton's, okay. They're gone, okay. All right, thank you. All right, so as you saw, they get a little bit of allocated stuff. They still had Buffalo Trace, which is every freaking where I go. The grocery store has Buffalo Trace in New Mexico, only one bottle, but it was like 24 bucks. That's probably the best price I've seen on it. They get Eagle Rare, they get Blanton's, but all of those were sold out. They do mark Blanton's up to $99, which is a decent markup, but not as crazy as some of these places. So about what I expected for grocery store liquor, but we're gonna try one more. I thought we had a couple of good independent liquor stores here, but I only saw the one. I thought this one was an independent liquor store. I didn't realize it was in a grocery store, but we're going to try the Safeway. There's a bunch of Safeways all throughout the, the West here. I've never been in a Safeway, not expecting a whole lot from it, but let's give it a try and see what we find. Never seen that bottle before. I think this is about what I expect out of grocery store liquor, right? It's your standard run-of-the-mill stuff, right? So you have some Jack Daniels with some Maker's Mark and some flavored stuff, Wild Turkey 101, like stuff that's in everything. And then a few off stuff. You know, your Elijah Craig Small Batch, your Long Branch, probably a Maker's 46 down there. Not that you think you can't get anywhere. When I said it couldn't be worse than Arizona, I was wrong. Like, even if the bottles cost thousands of dollars, at least I get to look at them. At least you get the excitement of seeing them and hoping that you've struck the gold mine instead of just coming into a grocery store or liquor shop and just finding Jack Daniels. But now we're going on an important mission. Like, that's it for the liquor in Gallup. That's where we're at. We're in, we're in Gallup, right? So in Gallup, New Mexico, 
Mexico. That's it for the liquor. We're going to hit the road. I think the next stop is Albuquerque. But before we do that, we got to go on an important mission to find something that Jill collects. And that are these Starbucks mugs that have the states on them. And so your grandparents probably collected plates with states on them. And Starbucks is like, that's exactly our demographic right there. Your grandmother. And so let's make states. And you got to go to Starbucks in each state to then get the cups with that state on it. What sucks about it is if I go into a liquor store and they don't have a bottle, then I just move on. Like I can just go on with my life. But here, you got to get it while you're in the state. So if this Starbucks doesn't have it, we have to go to 57 Starbucks. No joke, we spent more time in Kentucky looking for a Kentucky Starbucks mug than we did looking for liquor. And we never got one. Oh. Or did we get Arizona? Do you want one? You want people to send you an Arizona and a Kentucky Starbucks no, I mug? I want to get it when I'm there. You want to find it. The thrill is in the hunt, me. right? You got to yeah. you gotta kill that animal yourself. It's like the thrill for you is hunting. No, if you've got good bourbon, just send it to me. I will sit at home <laughs> on the couch and I will drink it. My enjoyment is in drinking it, not in finding it. Do you hear that bird, Jill? He's over there in that tree. That is so cool. What kind of bird is that? The technical uh, term for that bird is Bertimus annoyingus. <laughs> Let's hope, cross our fingers, and hope we find the cup on the first one. Did you find it first, go? Yes, I found it. You can't get it if you've not been there. You don't have to go there to get it. I think you have to. Well, what about places you've been, but you couldn't find the cup? Could somebody send you that one? Maybe, yeah. Okay so Kentucky. Kentucky or Arizona. As someone who spends an awful lot of time looking for and finding bourbon, it is fun when I find somebody else's hobby and I'm like, this is silly. <laughs> I understand how everybody thinks that the bourbon hunting is pretty freaking silly too. All right, so we got lucky and we found it first try. New Mexico. Found it. Starbucks cup there. We've recharged here with a caramel maca frappa latte chino and caramel ribbon crust. Jill got a, a whole cup of sugar. Hobby, I mean, let's be honest, I mine's full of sugar too. I can't drink coffee unless it tastes like hot chocolate, but that just looks like it's dessert the right best there. one I've ever had. Uh, do you need a spoon to eat that? No, you have a straw. It's a frappuccino. All right, let's get Albuquerque. Okay, it is three hours, three and a half hours later. We lost an entire hour just sitting still on the interstate and still to this day, it's the same day. That's how tired I am. That's how still <laughs> to, this, to this day, this same day. To this day. minute, to this to this hour, like we've way past it now. We're like three hours past where we had to sit there and we have no idea why. Like it just all, all lanes ground to a halt. And then they started moving again. Who knows? Who knows? But we're here at Paradise Liquors. And Jill is already taking credit for anything we find. Because she, oh, yeah. I'm just like, hey, pick us a liquor store to go to. She picked this one as the first go. Yeah, because he's picked the rest of them. And I won't say they were that great. So I think, because I picked this one. You think this, this is, is it. it? This is the place. This is where you're going to find everything you've ever wanted. Black Maple Hills, you don't see that very often. What's the deal with the Jack Daniels single barrel? Like, why is that in a box? This one's a store pick. That was a store pick? Yeah. Elijah Craig 18. Woodford Reserve double oak store pick. Tempting. We gotta get that. I can't get that back home. Gotta get that. Okay, so not a bad store. A lot of store picks. They had a, they had a ton of store picks in there, but nothing that really just jumped out at me as, as I wanted it. What I did notice is that they they think I'm talking to myself with the glass camera because I'm just walking around looking at bottles, talking to nobody because they don't know it's a camera. So they're just like, this weird guy just talks to himself about bottles of whiskey. I try to talk to them about it, but they're like, yeah. Uh, they did have Sinatra Select, so a ton of Sinatra Select. They had four or five bottles for like $179 or so. They had a Elijah Craig 18 at like 250 which I don't think is a terrible price for that. MSRP is probably pushing 200 on that bottle, but I have plenty of those and I've got one already in in the trucks. I'm not going to buy another Elijah Craig 18 at this point. I've came across a lot of those lately for some reason or another. So not great. I mean, we did buy the mellow corn. I've never seen mellow corn in Alabama. Now, I don't always look for it, but I've went looking for it a couple of times. Couldn't find it. A lot of people joke about it. I feel like it'd be cool to try a full corn whiskey because I've never, never tried this one. And another little liquor store we're going to here, Sky High. How's it going? Ah, it's going all right, man. How about yourself? I've been looking back there. That Bell Mead Reserve. Is that the hundred and was it 108 proof? Okay. What's your price on that? 74.95. Mm. Tax included. Y'all ever get anything allocated? Yeah, I sold it all through. I had EX Taylor. I had Blanton's. I have one bottle left of this Midwinter Night. What's your price on that? One. 
$159. I'll take that. It's called Monte Carlo Steakhouse. Go in and ask for George. He's the owner. See what he has. I know he always has stuff too. So that, it's like a steakhouse and liquor store? Yep. Interesting. Oh yeah, man. It's cool. So we didn't get to film a wrap up at the uh, last place. Gee is how it's pronounced. That's how he pronounced it. Jill was a little freaked out and she's not She's not good at this video game. So she didn't record any of it. I was like, you've got to get your camera. You got to record. I come out. She's sitting in the driver's side. You'll see ready. that. She had already moved my seat. She was in the driver's seat. She was ready to get out. She was just going to leave me there. If need be. If that's what it took. Yes. But there's a homeless guy talking to himself, freaked her out a little bit. He was a little scary, understand. And so we didn't get to film the wrap up. But the gentleman there that I don't remember his name because I'm terrible with names. I've called him Scott and Troy, but he told me to come down here and see what I think is George. I don't, I don't know. It's in the video. He may be George. It's in the video. Of course, it was, it was very, it was very uh, intense there for a second with Jill telling me to peel out. So I, I forgot everything. I was sitting there trying to remember it, but we're here at what is my first ever steakhouse slash liquor store. Like I just went to my first lounge slash liquor store and now I'm in my first steakhouse. And I really want to go to the steakhouse, but I don't think that's what we're going to do for lunch. But we did get a good deal on a Midwinter Night's Dram at least. This is Act 10, Scene 2 for like 150 something bucks. Every time I see it, it's like 250. So I, I went in and bought that. Now we're trying uh, Monte Carlo Steakhouse and Liquor Store. Hey, how's it going? You George? George, yeah. Yeah, the gentleman down at Ski High said this was the place to be. All right. I was just checking out your bourbon selection. Sure, come on in. Ooh, what's up with that old Fitz you got sitting up there on the top? That it's dusty bottle. Sale. How much? $1,983 Yeah. That's got the tax stamp on it. Man, on a different day, I might be willing to try that. I'm just always looking for something I can't find back home. If you look back there. Oh, I said Knob Creek set. Yeah, Never seen that before. 1994. That came out in 94? With Basil Hayden, Booker's, got the Baker 7 on it. 2020 have you got the 02. Larceny barrel proof? I have had Larceny yeah. Barrel Proof. You got a Shanks there? What are you looking for on that? Offer. They're like $100 MSRP. Now, it's it's like four years old, three years old. I get you. And they go for a little bit on secondary. I don't pay full secondary for anything. So if that's what you're looking for, it's fair. Right? I get it. I don't know what full secondary is because I haven't looked it up in two years. I think full secondary on a Shanks, I see them going for around two. So what are you telling me? You want to give me I, get, I give you a buck fifty for it, what I'm saying. I give you 150 for it. I'll meet you in the middle and go 175. I'm going to hold it 150. That's, that's where I'm at. I bought a lot of whiskey on the trip already. Knowing that I'm going to open it, I'm going to drink it. I'm not going to sell it. I never sold a bottle of whiskey in my life. I'll stick with where I'm at. I think 175 is a good deal, to be honest with you. Okay. Only because it's, it's four years old. Okay. I don't know how much of that I caught. My glasses were going dead, but that dude is cool. Like, he's been here forever. Said he had a lot of really old decanters. I, I filmed some of those. He showed us a bottle of really old, old granddad, which I tried to talk him out of. He didn't want to sell that one. They had an old bottle of old Fitz there, but he wanted a grand for it, and I just, I couldn't couldn't come off of that. Overall, some, some pretty cool stuff. I did end up buying this Shanks, which I don't know if I got beat on that, but I'm excited about it. I've never owned a bottle of Shanks. I've been looking for one. It's cool that I found one that's a little older before all of the bourbon hype. He he said he, t he had been offered a lot more money for it, but he liked me. He didn't say he liked me. He knows the market's changed. We negotiated and I firmly met right where he had priced it because he wouldn't come down. So I, I caved. I caved on the negotiation, Jill. I was oh trying God. to save 25 bucks and I'm like, I'm going to have to buy that bottle. But he was just talking. It was cool. I don't know how much of it I caught because my, my glasses died. The, the charger, they don't last very long when they're recording. First of all, they're full at the last place. It cut off halfway through my conversation. And I come here and it cuts off halfway through my conversation. So I don't know if this is going to turn out at all. This may be the worst bourbon hunting video ever, but I don't think we're going to make it to the place we're going. We got three bottles. I'm happy with that. I think that is good till Roswell. We'll check some places in Roswell. If we get there, we may do that today. We may do it in the morning. We'll see. We still got several hours to go. I really want to go in there and eat. Can we go in there and eat? The girls say no. It looked really good. I went back there in the steakhouse. It's a dingy old 70s looking steakhouse, yeah. but the food looked really good. It's going to take forever. Subway Daddy. Look, cool 70s old hole in the wall local gym of an establishment. I will say with I a read great the steak. And they say that the food is really good here. You know, like shag carpet, like old leather pleather chairs, exactly what you expect in an old 70s steakhouse named Monte Carlo. But I'm going to go to Subway instead. So. <sighs> It was just me and you, Daddy, we'd go in there and eat. I'm not going to record Subway. Y'all seen a Subway. If you've never seen a Subway, great. You've, you've lived a better life than I have. So we will catch up with y'all next in Roswell, New Mexico. 
All right, day three of our bourbon road trip to Texas and we are way freaking behind. All that bourbon hunting yesterday meant that we ended up stopping here in Roswell. We didn't get to Roswell in time or with enough energy to actually go bourbon hunting. So we're gonna do that this morning, but none of these liquor stores really open till noon on Saturday, which is strange. I guess people in New Mexico don't drink until afternoons on Saturday. So we've got everything all packed up here. We get less and less efficient packing this each and every day. Keep trying different ways to make it hold more or go in there a little easier and you just got to manhandle it but we've got everything packed up we're gonna go see some alien stuff until around lunchtime check out a couple of bottle shops and head our way to texas but because we had to stop in roswell we're about two hours off schedule so it's going to be a long day today so i'm not sure how much we're actually going to be able to look in texas but let's make sure we get new mexico thoroughly searched here and then we'll see how texas shakes out. So this is one of the craziest McDonald's you're ever going to see. Like it's all alien themed. Got a spaceship in front. What in the world we got here? What is that? Hey, what you doing out here with all this ass? He's a tiny little guy. I think we could take it. Pointing at the sky or is he pointing at the McDonald's sign? So it's done in six days. Six days point out a few things for you. This right here is Native American peace symbol. Right here is the Griffith Park Observatory. You know what the red planet is, right? What's the red planet? Tell me, in case somebody doesn't know. Saturn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, and right there is the UFO McDonald's. Did it in a week? Six days. It's a beautiful mural. Yes, he did all of this freehanded. See, that's the lesson here at McDonald's. The next time a strange man tries to lure you into an alleyway, just go, because you never can tell what you're gonna see. There you go. <laughs> Here's a little road tripping secret for y'all. Cokes already come out of the fountain cold, man. You don't need ice. You fill it full of ice, you get no Coke in there, right? So leave the ice out, super cold. Ah, you get more stuff. We're interrupting this regularly scheduled bourbon content for some alien stuff. That's enough alien content. This is not an alien channel. Let's get back to the bourbon content. Now, like I said, we're way freaking behind. So we're gonna stop at a couple of places here in New Mexico, and then we're gonna probably just have to hit the road to Texas and then just kind of recap the haul there. So we are here at Quality Liquor in Roswell, and Roswell's a weird freaking town. Like the whole town just kind of smells like horse manure or something this afternoon. It's just, it's a weird freaking town, man. Gift shops are just like old and dingy and like it's not, not what I expect. I mean, definitely alien themed. All right, so let's go into quality here and see what we can find. All right, that was a nice fella. He said, uh, if you find any aliens, to take them with you. Just capture them, take them with you. I got two Buffalo Trace White Dogs right here. I don't know what the MSRP on these are, but it was like 20 bucks or $23, I think, for these guys. We're going to take these. We're going to put them in a barrel and age them for months and months and months. And every month, we'll take a little sample and try them against like Blanton's or something like that or whatever. We'll find some Mashville number one Buffalo Trace and try those. So, Jill, what, is, what does Roswell smell like? Horse poop. I, I say pee. I don't know if there's like some some livestock around here somewhere, but we're like a mile away from the hotel and it still just smells like that everywhere. So Roswell definitely has an interesting aroma to it. I smell it on you now. Because you got in the car. Well, you just opened the door. Yeah. Don't be saying it's on me. Don't well, be putting that like on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't put that voodoo <laughs> on me, Ricky Bobby. I meant like I smelled it when you got in the car. Okay. All right, so it's time to hit the road, and then we will just kind of check up. If I stop to get gas or something and we find a place, then maybe we'll stop. Otherwise, we got to make up some time. It is about noon right now, and we've still got eight and a half hours to drive. So time to hit the road, and then we'll recap what all we found. So we had a little technical difficulties with some of the footage, so I don't have all of the stops I made, but we really didn't find anything interesting. We stopped at a little place in Texas that was cool, but they had just the basics. Overall, not a bad trip. I don't love traveling like this I like the efficiency like just get to where I'm going and this is very inefficient but it is kind of fun to stop see some of the local stores and see the differences in what they're actually carrying and what they can get access to tons of Sinatra select 
as we were crossing the country here. I've probably seen more bottles of Sinatra Select on this trip than I've seen in my entire freaking life. Overpaid for the Knob Creek 18, like that's about the third most amount of money I've ever paid for a bottle of whiskey. And it's good, I've cracked it open, it's good. It's not, it's not that good. So overpaid a little bit. I was excited about the Buffalo Trace kosher wheat, but again, not an exceptional bottle. Like it's fine, it's good. If you like Buffalo Trace stuff, you're gonna like that, but it's definitely not worth the rarity and the hype and probably not worth what I paid for it. Overall, successfully found some bottles, but probably just spent too much money because I was hunting and I just felt like I needed to buy something after all of that effort. So I don't know if y'all like these cross country road trips. I've got another trip coming up here soon. We're gonna go to Branson, Missouri next week from when I'm filming this. And so I might try to do it again. It's pretty slim pickings. I'm gonna have to go through Mississippi, through Arkansas some on that trip. And I'm not sure what the liquor hunting looks like on the roads that I've got to take there. But if y'all enjoy this, let me know down in the comments and I will try to do some more of it on that trip trip as well. Catch y'all on the next one.